Okay, now we spend plenty of time on our physical fitness, but how much effort do you put into exercising your brain? Our diet and fitness guest today is an international speaker and author on the topic. Welcome to the Harvey Norman Lounge, Arnie Wilson. Thank you for having me, Mel. Welcome, welcome. Now I want to ask you, most people worry about losing their marbles as they get older. Um, is it possible to prevent this? Absolutely, anything's possible, right? Um, but gone are the days where we used to think that the brain stopped developing by the age of 28. And so I even remember thinking after that birthday, all downhill from there, really? right? But it's um, actually a fact that neurons and cells are regenerated every 24 hours. So all we need to do is support our brain in optimising that process. Wow, so I can't blame my m incredible forgetfulness on having three children and, and, and getting older. Well, there is something in that, though. Yes, because you've got so much going on, haven't you? Just trying to balance everything out. So we can actually help create new neurons and cells, that's what you're saying? We absolutely can. Um, look, stress and a lack of sleep are two of the biggest determinants that um, reduce our rate of neurogenesis, which is the creation of cells and neurons. Counter to that, though, is learning a new skill or aerobic activity or also ingesting more flavonoids into our diet are all um, known to increase the rate of neurogenesis. And before you ask... What's a flavonoid? Flav <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we eat flavonoids in our blueberries, but dare I say it, uh, dark chocolate. Uh, oh, you can excuse. say that all you want, Arnie, all you want. So dark chocolate, it's in there as well. So by eating that chocolate after dinner, I'm actually increasing my brain power. You're helping your brain to create the new neurons and cells, sort of, you know, reducing that aging process. Absolutely. I knew it. So it's fascinating to learn that they do regenerate every 24 hours like that. I had no idea. Uh, what about men and women? Do we age differently in our brains? Yes and no. I like to think that no, we don't have any excuse to, but um, science does tell us that a woman's brain does shrink in certain areas as opposed to men's. Oh, Arnie, but they are you really... very different areas. So in a woman's brain, we are okay, there's more... Okay, the <laughs> right? Yeah, so um, for a female brain, it's the areas that are located um, in our parietal lobe or our uh, hippocampus, which are why we lose our memory or spatial awareness. Right. Whereas with the guys, it's always the frontal lobe or the temporal lobe, which is why they are afflicted by personality or reasoning issues. You might hear the grumpy old man so syndrome. Is, so they're just eggs, and we can't read maps. That's essentially what you're telling us. There you go. Me there. Um, the spatial <laughs> thing, I do have very difficult difficulties with. Ask my husband, he's trying to drive with me. I just, yeah. just can't look at something and get where we are. Oh, that's quite fascinating though. Mm. Uh, a lot of that female brain seem to be taking up with shopping. There is something in that too. And the bizarre moods <laughs> too. I, I like thing. the bizarre <laughs> moods bit. Um, is it fact or fiction though? Uh, crosswords and Sudoku, they're good for brain health? Yes, predominantly if you are a creative more so though. If you think about this one thing, the more you excite your brain to do something that's completely different to what you do on a day in day out basis, mm. then that's supporting it in building new pathways, right? So if I was to tell an executive whose sole journey during the day is problem solving, reasoning, analytical type things, and I then ask him to do crosswords and Sudoku at night, then his brain is just already bored and goes into an overload system. So if you're a gardener, then Sudoku and crosswords absolutely fundamentally paramount in order to use the whole brain. Wow, what about video games and kids? Oh, that's on another pathway altogether because that is them just focusing on one single thing and um, fast reaction times, but there's, uh, I don't even want to get into that side of things. <laughs> that's a whole <laughs> other show whole we'll have to get show. you back for. Uh, can you give me some exercises then that we can actually use to improve our brain health? Yeah, fantastic. How much time have we got? Um, look, there are thousands of brain hacks, and you can Google brain hacks at any time mm -hmm. um, to help. But some of the really fundamental things are, um, I mentioned the grumpy old man syndrome. Yes, and we all know is, one of those. Yeah, they did a study not so long ago where they took a group of grumpy old men and they got them to use their non-dominant hand for a period of two weeks to do mundane tasks such as brushing their teeth, combing their hair, opening doors. And they actually found that areas of the brain that ha looked dead under an EEG were completely reactivated. Wow. Giving them access to pre-qualify their outbursts and making them nicer people. So one of the um, easiest activities is to go home and start using your less dominant hand, for me that's my left hand, to do really simple tasks. And you'll just open neural flow. That's great. We're going to leave it right there. I'm going to okay. use my non-dominant hand now to pick up my coffee and drink it because um, I'm going to be a nicer person because Mike will be very pleased if that happens. That's fascinating. Uh, great advice too. Thanks, Arnie. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us. Now, you can go to Arnie's website if you would like more tips and advice on how to get the most out of your brain power.